what up YouTube welcome back to the vlog man update 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 I know it's been a long time we've been working man we've been busy working busy trying to book loads trying to get going but let's do an update on this vlog let's go going through small little towns yes I know I'm using Google Maps if you're new to trucking and you ain't got no GPS I suggest invest in a GPS like a trucking GPS don't don't do what I do I'm doing what I'm doing because I'm very familiar okay see look at that truck route 10 West you see that you got to pay attention to these signs these signs will get you a long way with trucking you know Boy, I do miss trucking. Look at this small town. Look at this small town, man. It's amazing. I love going through small little towns like this, you know? So, um, but anyway, so what, we'll start from the beginning. So the truck, we, we fix a lot of things on the truck, right? We work a lot of things on the truck. Also, the APU, APU is 100% working look at you see this line you see that guy he knows what's going on so if somebody was to turn he's giving them room there a truck was to turn he's giving them room there actually I think he said no truck on a turn right turning right there so but anyway um, so we work on the APU the APU has given us a lot of headache man um, it cost us almost a thousand dollars total so far in fixing and getting that APU going but now it's working immaculate, like perfect. AC is blowing like stinking freaking 45 at right there when I measure it right there at the at the vent. So that's pretty good. I'm very impressed by that. Um, I did put a leak detector on it because I felt like it was leaking uh, when I did a vacuum on it. it I was only able to get to like 24 on the vacuum, which is not great. Most AC should be around 28 to 30, right? I'm not very good in AC, by the way. So, but uh, that's what people recommend is uh, 28 to 30. That's where your vacuum should be. But the thing is that I was using, what do you call it? I'm using uh, Pittsburgh tools, so is the vacuum really that good or is it the gauges you see what i mean so i went with it anyway okay went with it and it's still holding a few days later it's still holding at you know at 46 degrees so i like that right at the vent 46. i'm i'm very happy with that i did put leak detector on there leak detector on there a die but I have not looked into the system, see what it looks like as far as like if there's any leak or anyway. But see, the thing about this generator, right, or uh, this APU is that a lot, of the, the, uh, a lot of the components on it is brand new. And what I'm guessing is that, so the last owner of this truck, they were trying to work on this APU and what had happened was they couldn't figure out what the problem was. So they dump all of this money in it but they still couldn't figure out what the problem was. And here we are. We over here just small time, you know, backyard mechanic, we figured it out. So what the problem is like, they, they got this thing they call glow plug. So a glow plug acts like a spark plug, okay? It's, uh, it's basically a replacement of a spark plug, but into a diesel uh, outfit. So small diesel engines. Small diesel engines have smaller compression, right? So they need a little bit of boost to, uh, what you call it, to get going. They need that little bit of boost because, like I said, small compression, right? So um, we figured out it was the glow plug. And the glow plug, one of the glow plugs was on, uh, getting hot 
the other one was getting hot and I even touched it and it, it was pretty freaking hot. So don't do that. Don't touch a glow plug. <laughs> anyway, so it was getting hot. One, only one was getting hot and the other one wasn't. So we went to go look for the part, right? Thermo King, Thermo King, mind you, Thermo King wanted $115 for that one little glow plug. We needed two of them. I was gonna replace two because you, you don't know what the other one is like, how it's gonna perform, you know? So um, $115 times two, that's, that's quite a bit of money for some glow plugs. So I went, I went to go research and I found the same exact glow plug, the same exact manufacturer, except there's a little bit of difference in the specs with the, uh, with, with the height of the connector, which is no problem. All we had to do was cut that, right? Anyway, uh, it was $5.99 at freaking AutoZone. Imagine that, $5.99. Same brand, same everything. And she fired right up as soon as we got it we got we got that plugged in so okay we are taking back roads right now we're supposed to be picking up one single flatbed um, uh, I was kind of skeptical is paying 230 a mile which is good, but at the same time, it's kind of like, really, they're paying 230 a mile for a single flatbed, you know? So if this is a stack flatbed, we're definitely gonna ask for some more money. I, he specifically said that it was a single flatbed, so. Uh, but that lane actually averages 250 a mile. So we're paying, it's paying 230 a mile. I'm not, I'm not too mad about that, okay? And it's a single flatbed. If, if it's a double flatbed, we're gonna be, uh, or if it's more than one, we're definitely gonna be asking for some more money. Anyway, so our first load, as since we started our truck, trucking back up, it was a, uh, it was a step deck. We got us a loadout trailer, a step deck loadout trailer, that one paid over a dollar a mile for a loadout trailer from California all the way to uh, Georgia. So that's pretty doggone good. The, the load that we got out of there was paying a dollar eighty a mile. So that's pretty good, right? So we're averaging three dollar a mile from California to Louisiana. That's pretty good on an open deck. You can you can trust me on that. You cannot get any better than that. And, and and the best part about it is they were all right there within six miles away from the pickup. Pick up the trailer, six miles away, that's where we picked up the forklift. That's pretty good. I, I, I cannot emphasize this enough. That's pretty freaking good. Needless to say, I would say we got pretty doggone lucky on that one. Why? Because it's February and slow season and it's open deck and it's coming from California. Trust me on that we got pretty doggone lucky. Usually open deck is good coming into California. Coming out of California is pretty tough. So after we dropped off that forklift in Louisiana, we had about 450 miles deadhead towards Atlanta. So it's like, you know, I could have found a load. I could have waited and found a partial, but you know what? I, I decided on not to go ahead and continue on and just get to Atlanta, drop off that trailer, and let's see what we got in the Atlanta area, which was a good idea, which was a good decision because we were able to pick up a stack of trailers or a stack of chassis, uh, container chassis, going into Jacksonville, right? And supposedly the plan was we were supposed to grab another one of the same guy, of the same load that, uh, a stack of chassis and by the way the first one paid over four dollar a mile so we were gonna deadhead back it was paying uh two 240 240 a mile going there and coming back always right all the all the miles so i was like you know what that's a good deal right so we were gonna come back for more and the second stack that we were supposed to pick up was 
not stack properly. So I decided on like trying to get that resolved, see if we can get it restacked. But for some reason, uh, that area, that whole fort, that like northwest or whatever the heck it is, anyway, it's not. They're not. They're not in a hurry to go anywhere. You know, they're. I'm guessing it's a union job. I'm guessing. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's besides the point. The point is that the 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 chassis was not stacked properly so we went ahead and told the broker this and it's not safe to haul it and it's not safe to, to be able to secure it because it was sticking too far out and and uh we, we're just gonna go ahead and just we're not gonna go pick that up until they restack it and the uh, broker was like okay no problems you know uh then the next day this is what we got right here this is this is the load i i actually woke up for a little late to check the load board you know and uh, I'm glad I'm glad I woke up the time that I did and they posted this load this load it specifically says single flatbed we will see when we get here we are about 20 miles away from it so let's see Here is that trailer. Man, it was raining. It's been raining all day. So we've driven. We're here in Mobile, Alabama right now. But look how small this freaking trailer is. This trailer is short, man. Look, look. <laughs> it's like barely longer than my truck. I don't know what it's, what this trailer is used for. What do you, what do they use this trailer for? It seemed like it's something would be very specific. So looks like the plate number would be there. It looks like there's some kind of, uh, oh, maybe a piggyback, what they call a piggyback, right? The forklift that piggybacks right here. It look, yeah, it looks like it's got the right area made with pride. Okay. The right area to put in the stinking, uh, what you might call it, the forklift. Let me see it's a little trailer right but I tell you what this son of a gun is heavy this damn thing has some weight in it man I mean it's not bad weight wise I mean the truck is pulling it like we're averaging right now we're averaging like high eight so I like that and we're rolling like 70 miles an hour so I mean it's it's heavy, but it's not at the same time. It's just, it doesn't have a lot of wind drag, that's for sure. But, man, I like this load. It's not bad. I wish our lo all of our loads are like this. She don't got no problem pulling it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you guys are thinking already. I've been th I'm thinking the same thing. Hey, why not go find a partial, right? Yeah. I tried. <laughs> I tried, believe me. I mean, I'm kind of glad we didn't, and at the same time, you know, I'm not glad. I'm glad that we didn't because I don't know what, uh, I know we're not going to get in trouble with the broker. <laughs> so, you know, if they catch us, right? That's only if they catch you. So, my check one, two, my check. So after you factor in everything, so here it is the next day already, man, I tell you, time. So here it is the next day already, man, I tell you, freaking time just flies by, man. You get so tired doing a lot of stuff, man. As an owner-operator, man, let me tell you, if you're a 100% owner-operator, man, it ain't easy out there. That's why you have to make sure you get compensated for all of this, you know. But anyway, so when, um, when you factor everything, right, you... We ran like 2,800 miles and made like almost 7,000. We ran a total of all the miles. I'm talking about all miles, including bobtail, deadhead, and everything, right? We averaged 234 to the mile. I'd say that's not bad. I'd say that's not bad because the, work, the truck is not working as hard 
uh, compared to say your flatbed. Most of your flatbed loads are gonna be freaking heavy. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> She runs good. Now, um, I have a feeling there's still a leak on there, so we're gonna have to take care of that. But I'm very happy and satisfied with it. We will see how it's gonna go as far as like, you know, if it's gonna hold up. I, I like the way it sounds. The engine runs smooth, doesn't vibrate that much. So I like it, I like it. There's no, uh, there's no funny noise or funny sound to it, so it just, it just works, man. What I would still like to know is, what is this trailer used for, man? This thing, this little cute thing. <laughs> you know, it's just, I've never, I've been flatbed for some years, man. I've never, I've never once seen these flatbed. I, that's why when I first saw it, I was very surprised. Like, what do they use these for? You know, what do y'all think? Comment down below. What, if you, do you know specific use for this trailer? But anyway, anyway, so, man, power only, what do I think? I kind of like it so far, man. But the thing is, you have to be very versatile. So you got to bring your A game, man. It's not, it's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. It's not something like, okay, I'm going to look for a load, just one pick, one drop. You know, it's not kind of something like that. You have to be very versatile. You have to be aware of, your area, the area, the market that you're at, and you have to make sure you gotta be able to be like, okay, uh, this time I'm gonna pull just a single trailer. Next time I'm gonna pull a freaking flatbed or a forklift uh, uh, load. Next time I'm gonna pull a stack of chassis. You know, you those are some of the things that you gotta do as a power only, you know, to be versatile. I think our average is 234 and I like that a lot I, I I can't say I don't think there's a lot of owner operators out there that can say that they all miles can average 234 in February you know what I mean so I like that but anyway uh, that's the end of this vlog man well that's the update we are taking a 34 hour reset I'm gonna freaking pump this video out man I apologize because man busy 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 we will see y'all in the next video